Chris Horner talking about our responsibility to get involved. The press isn't going to do their job. They're carrying the water for the president because ideologically they're on the same line with them. You understand that. That's, hey, listen, by the way, it's not about R's or D's. Do you agree with the president? Well, if you agree with the president, I, I think you'd be upset with the dishonesty of the mainstream media in light of the fact he says so many things that are not true and they have the record to go after that. And the only people that do it are the likes of One News Now, OneNewsNow.com, and the Gateway Pundit, and Fox News. And they are belittled consistently in one way or another. We're talking about the folks that are exposing this stuff by, even, even by so-called conservatives like Joe Scarborough. Well, what's great is we have the new media, talk radio, which is the original town hall, it's a wonderful experience, nothing but truth, nothing but truth.com as you are listening and watching and you are hearing AFR talk. What a tremendous resource that is. I encourage you to do it and lock it in. So Chris Horner told us about that, how to get involved, the liberal war on transparency. Then we went over the minimum wage. I made the comment that, hey, the president thinks we're stupid. And I think he does, because when you get beyond the good intentions of raising it arbitrarily through government decree, uh, you realize that it hurts the very people that ostensibly it's trying to help. And it shows no understanding of basic economics. So it, it's sad when you have people on both sides of the aisle thinking this is a good idea, or even government's role to put that in. It's uh, it's one of those things where I just sit there and go, okay, uh, I mean, are they painting the Capitol and I just don't realize that the paint fumes are making people daffy? Well, that's a lot of paint, if that's the case. No, it's it's actually playing upon our idea of fairness and actually exploiting our own desire for people to succeed and be able to take care of others. And so we see policies that government can do it, government-centered. Mentioned this before, I'll say it again, government-centered policy is going to be one that makes you less free. It also will only grow and incentivize dependence on government. So recognizing that it will have the exact opposite impact you would want it to have through solving the problem, I think that you look at the result and say, well, gee, we don't want to do that. Our founders understood this. They understood human nature didn't evolve. It does not evolve. We understand everybody's self-interest and power and the nature of power. So to do that, we should stick to what they outlined and what we recognize in our declaration and what's codified in our Constitution, the Bill of Rights, so really important, and Dr. Carson made that point as stated, and we need to understand what the founders were speaking to because the principles they laid out don't have an expiration date. And the recognition that our rights come from God and not the state is before anything else, if you understand that. And understand that freedom comes with a responsibility, and that is to take care of others. Don't buy into the government saying that that's their job with the safety net. No. As I mentioned, and I think take one, the Faustian bargain that it is, because it will incentivize dependence and the very behavior that you're trying to stop. And it also goes to the growth of government and they'll never have enough. They will never have enough. I mean, they'll just keep going and going and going and then targeting other people who have the resources because they don't create wealth, they can only redistribute it. Ben Johnson made a wonderful point when it came to gun control and the children. I thought that was great. One, we recognize that the gun is not the person, or the person, right? Uh, the thing to blame, it is the person firing the gun and understanding that. Also understanding why we have a Second Amendment, the check on powers, the, the idea of self-defense and being able to defend yourself as we've seen the issue of gun control and the response to it will do nothing to solve the problem. And we need to look at 
involuntary commitment laws on a state level, you can do that. You can look at gun-free zones. That's a problem. What are, what are you going to do? You're going to look for the path of least resistance, and we've seen that with these horrible, horrible killers and tragedies. So, yeah, we can focus and solve the problem. And I think that's the thing. We want to solve the problems. Dr. Brian Dimitrievich pointed out what we needed for economic growth, the four pillars, and it is pretty much a strong dollar, free trade, lower low taxation so you don't take away the incentive to grow and you don't punish producers and free free trade and so those are the things that have to be the key ingredients and they've always worked and we saw that with the quote Reagan revolution we understood that even in the Clinton 96 on uh, has two tax cuts on investment capital gains so we understand this stuff Bush 40 percent revenue increase after the tax cuts of 2003 to 2007. We saw that. We are taking, uh, I don't understand why the president continues to put out there that he's solving the problem with more regulation through the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That makes no sense to me. Uh, when we think of what got us into the mess, it was actually government that got us into the mess. And as long as we recognize the government cannot make two plus two equal five we recognize that and they can't violate the laws of economics they then i think we'll have policies that will actually incentivize growth but the bottom line is all of these things start out and are sold to us as compassion and as fair and they're anything but because fairness true fairness is being held accountable for your actions and that's actually true freedom. And what we are seeing is the idea that government can give you something, government can give us something, and there's not a cost to it, and that it will not have a impact on how people view government and their own behavior. It's, it's just, it's bizarre. Because the, the idea that you're pressuring banks to make loans that are not market-wise under the specter that there could be racism. Again, we all can't stand racism. We all reject it. That's why it's used to divide us. If this country was truly racist, they wouldn't be able to use that. They wouldn't be able to use it. But they recognize that's a div divider and that we have such strong feelings in rejecting racism that the vast majority of us are not putting on little berets and sunglasses or sheets and burning small teas that they use it so we gotta understand that and step back and say shame on you for undermining the very civil rights movement that you claim you're upholding so a lot more to say and as I told you the state of the of the union address from Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth is I'm putting it back, giving it some distance from the responses and the State of the Union last night because I want a, I don't want it to be tied to the State of the Union and that way I want it to be a standalone but we will have it and I'll go into these things in more depth. With all that said I want to thank our guests, I want to thank Ben Johnson for recognizing the that the real victims, the 55 million that have been killed through abortion, I want to thank Dr. Dimitrovich for taking the time, and as well as Chris Horner for doing a great job. And I want to thank you for being a part of things. Now, I just got a text, and I got to get going because my lady, the love of my life, and my two great blessings, and I'm not talking about my dogs. The kids are awaiting. So forgive me, but I got to go. Remember, God knows you. God loves you. He created you. He has a plan for you. Really take that in. He has one for you. Live with honor in your life, compassion in your heart, and always keep.